So before the Mavic Pro was available, I was building and flying a very different type of multi-copter. And here we can see some examples. This one is a hexacopter with six motors, and the other two are quadcopters. Now when you fly a drone like the Mavic Pro, it has a limited angle of bank and pitch and will automatically return to level when you let go of the controls. What I mean by that is if you apply maximum right stick, the drone will only bank to a certain angle and not go any further. Also, if I use full forward or aft, the drone will only pitch to a certain angle and it won't go any further. These drones are not designed for aerobatics. They are designed to be an aerial camera and that is why they have that limitation. And the Mavic has a mode known as sports mode which you can select with this toggle switch on the side and all sports mode does is increase the maximum angle that the drone will reach. So if the angle was initially 30 degrees and sport mode lets you go to 45 degrees for example, the drone is going to maneuver a lot faster. But you still can't fly aerobatics. And at all times the Mavic has a self-level capability and that means if I bank to the left like that and the drone banks, when I release the control input the drone will automatically return to level. That is what is called self-level. But if you're flying an aerobatic drone, such as this Armitan VTAL, you have unrestricted motion in roll and pitch, and that allows you to fly aerobatics. Now the flight controller has several modes that you can select via the radio. Welcome to Free Sky Tyrannus, Armitan 355 VTAL, self-level mode, idle down. Low battery, battery critical. So we have what is called self-level mode. We also have horizon mode. Horizon mode. And we also have acro mode. Acro mode. Now in self-level mode. Self-level mode, this drone will behave very similar to the Mavic. When you apply a control input, it will bank. When you release that input, it will return to level. And it will have a restricted angle on the amount of roll and pitch available in self-level mode. The next mode we can use is horizon mode. horizon mode. And that's a good one when you're first learning to fly aerobatics with drones because it still gives you the self-level capability. When you release the control inputs, the drone will return to level by itself. However, we now no longer have the restriction on the amount of roll or pitch available. So in horizon mode, if I use maximum deflection in roll, the drone is going to just keep rolling as long as I have that stick deflected. If I release the stick, it will instantly return to level. And the final mode is how I always fly this drone. Acro mode. Acro mode. In that mode, we lose the self-level capability. The drone simply responds to the pilot's inputs. When there are no inputs, there is no response. So for example, if I apply maximum right stick, the drone will roll to the right. When I release the stick, it will just remain at whatever attitude it was when the stick was released. There is no self-level capability. So this is a mode where you actually have to always fly the drone and you control its attitude constantly yourself. So when operating in self-level or horizon mode, this flight controller is relying on the accelerometers to know which way is up and down. It needs to know which way is down in order to be able to level itself. When you operate in acro mode, you no longer need the accelerometers. In fact, most pilots who fly in acro mode all the time will disable the accelerometers in the flight controller. And what that does is free up CPU cycle time, allowing the flight controller to run at a higher refresh rate. And that is better for high-speed aerobatics. In the software, you can disable the accelerometers. 
If you do that, you lose all self-level capability, regardless of the mode selected by the radio. Let's take a look at that in the software. So this is the same type of flight controller that I use in the red VTAL, now connected to my laptop and the configuration software. You can see that as I move the attitude of the flight controller, the image is indicating that motion accordingly. We also have a small artificial horizon indication, and as we bank left, that indicates a left bank. Similarly, banking right, it indicates a right bank, and also correctly displays the pitch attitude. You can see down the bottom here, we have a cycle time of 1000. So the CPU in the flight controller is running at one kilohertz. Now in this software, we can go to the sensor tab and see the actual outputs from the gyroscope and the accelerometer. There's the gyroscope on top and the accelerometer beneath. And you can see that we're showing 0.98G in the Z axis. Now if I move that flight controller to its side, we now have that 0.98 in the Y axis. If I move it where it's facing straight down, we're now showing that 1G in the X axis. So the accelerometer in the flight controller is detecting the force of gravity. The gyros are simply measuring how much the flight controller is actually moving. So the self-level capability within the flight controller is coming from the accelerometer. It needs to know which way is down to know which way is level. Without the accelerometer, it won't know its attitude. By measuring the direction of gravity, it can determine which way the drone is oriented. And that is why it knows how to move back to self-level. Let's see what happens if we disable the accelerometers in the software. So at the moment, the accelerometer is enabled. You can see that by the green icon and also by the fact that the software is accurately showing the movement of the flight controller. What we can do is turn off the accelerometer right here. We will toggle it off. We will save and reboot. And you'll see the lights flicker on the flight controller as it reboots. It has now rebooted with the accelerometer disabled. And you'll notice that no matter how much we move that flight controller, it has no idea of its current attitude. The artificial horizon is not moving and the indication of the drone is not moving at all. If we now go to the sensor tab and try to select accelerometer, we can't because it is disabled but we still have the gyro outputs. So operating in this mode, we could only fly the drone in acro mode. It would have no self-level capability. It would simply respond to the pilot's control stick inputs. If you let go of the sticks, it will not self-level. It will remain at whatever attitude it is in when the sticks are centered. Let's now re-enable the accelerometers. Again, nothing when they are disabled. Enabling the accelerometer and save and reboot. The lights flash as it reboots. And now with the accelerometer enabled again, the software can accurately show the orientation of the flight controller because now it knows its orientation with respect to the direction of down. And this is where some flat earthers get very confused about the operation of an aircraft artificial horizon and the gyroscopes and accelerometers in a drone flight controller. Because this flight controller is determining its attitude from the accelerometer, it is constantly measuring the direction of down. And if the controller is just sitting there on a rotating earth, that direction of down is not changing with respect to the flight controller, and therefore we see no movement. As we indicated in a previous video, 
the gyroscope in this type of flight controller is just not accurate enough to measure the rotation of the Earth. There is one flat earther currently doing experiments with a drone flight controller, but all he is really doing is demonstrating that the accelerometer is able to show him the changing attitude when he moves it with respect to the ground. So testing for an indication of motion by moving the flight controller is not a valid demonstration that the flight controller could detect the rotation of the Earth because it is now not rotating with respect to the Earth. The Earth could do a full 360 degrees in 24 hours and the orientation of this flight controller with respect to the Earth is not going to change because the attitude being indicated on this artificial horizon is coming from the accelerometer. You're not going to see any motion on a rotating Earth. The only part of the instrument that may detect motion is the gyroscope here. And we demonstrated that it is not accurate enough to detect the 0 0.004 degrees per second. That is the Earth's rotation. So the flat earther conducting these experiments with his own flight controller goes by the name of Rude Earther. And this is one of his videos showing the artificial horizon indication in the software from his own controller. While he can be true to his name and post quite rude comments, I have been bantering back and forth with him for the last two weeks, and he's actually not a bad guy, so please don't give him a hard time. He's out there trying to do these experiments himself. What I have explained to him is that the indication in his artificial horizon is coming from the accelerometers in the flight controller. If he was able to disable those accelerometers, it would show no movement as I indicated with my own just a few minutes ago. What he is failing to understand is that the flight controller is sensing the direction of down. So when it is on a moving earth, there will be no indication in that artificial horizon. He places his controller on an equatorial mount and moves the mount and it shows movement. And that is because it is detecting the changing orientation with respect to down. If he was able to disable the accelerometers and repeat the experiment, he would see no movement at all. So head over to his channel and just ask him to turn off the accelerometers and repeat the experiment. But don't give him a hard time. He's not a bad bloke. So one of the comments made by Rude Earther is that I was only using a cheap NASE flight controller that's okay, let's try it again with an SP Racing F3 controller. Using Betaflight, I now have this flight controller connected to the software. And again, you can see the indication of the attitude of the drone and also on the artificial horizon. Again, we can go in and disable the accelerometer. Let's disable that now. Save and reboot. And we now have no indication at all of the attitude. So the only way the drone knows which way is up and down is by sensing the direction of gravity with the accelerometer. We can turn that back on. Save and reboot. So now with the accelerometer enabled again, if we go to the sensor output page, there are the outputs from the gyroscope detecting motion. And if we select accelerometer, this is the indication detecting orientation. It is the accelerometer that allows the drone flight controller to know its orientation. If we turn off the accelerometer again, Turn it off, save and reboot. We have no indication of attitude. The flight controller doesn't know which way is up. It only knows it's moving. It has no idea of its orientation with respect to the ground. And looking at the accelerometer output, 
obviously there's nothing with the accelerometer turned off. Hey guys, it's Rob. This is the Armatan 355 VTAIL, the red version, and uh, I've just spent a couple of lipos this afternoon just tweaking the um, PIDs. It was just oscillating a little bit when I copied them across from my uh, other 355. This one has different motors and ESCs, but I, I think we're almost there now. Idle up. It just looks great in the air. I don't know if the video is doing it justice, but in the sunlight, the red just looks like a, a deep ruby colour. Using the same custom mix and uh, all the response and your control feels good. Full power climb, what I'll do is just close the throttle to idle, roll inverted, and just let it float down inverted. So easy to orientate with this uh, shape and the vertical profile of the V just makes it so much easier for me. Just power off descent. This has got the uh, Q-Brain 4-in-1 ESC, which uh, is pretty sensational with BL Heli. Once you flash it to BL Heli, it's actually running 14.6 and it just works great on this. Uh... It transforms the Q-Brain, I think, from uh, a pretty average ESC to a sensational one. First multi-copter I ever built had a Q-Brain but it just had the stock firmware and it never really seemed stable it just was just oscillating a lot and you couldn't really tune it properly but with BL Heli it's uh, sensational Five, four, three, two, one, zero. 